Andre, what did you say to my little boy today? What's that? What are you asking about? I hear that you complained about the food he had made earlier today. Why did you think it was okay for you to do that? You should never have the urge to tell my family if their cooking is good or not. Are you jealous of him because he's the son of this business's owner? That's not at all what all of this was about. Why do you think I'd be jealous of him? I wasn't even complaining about his cooking in the first place. I am in a position to teach him about the correct way to prepare food. And so I was just teaching him a better method for preparing the dishes he's made. I'm sorry, but I will not allow him to serve anything below my standards in the restaurant. Are you trying to say that my son's cooking isn't any good? <laughs> he's been cooking in our house ever since he was a little boy. Cassidy, your son is now 35 years old and can manage things like this by himself. And as I've been led to believe, he hasn't ever been interested in cooking until just this year. So there's no way that he'd be perfect at everything in the kitchen right off the bat. And now that you've mentioned him, I'd like to inform you that he's not taking his work in the kitchen very seriously. If he keeps that up, I'm not going to be able to entrust him with any of the work that needs to be done here. What are you saying? He is the son of this place's CEO. We will leave everything regarding this restaurant entrusted to him. If you are having such a problem teaching him how to cook well, like you've said, then perhaps that means you're not cut out to work for us anymore. I don't think that it's me that's the problem here. I really do think that this all has to do with him and his drive to do better here. I am a bit worried about him at this point and would like that you talk things over with him as well. If he doesn't have the drive to do better, he'll never learn to cook well. You're awful, Andre. I always thought before that you were a bit much, but now it's just too much for me to even handle. This is not supposed to be about me right now. But you are still awful. Sitting there making a joke out of my son. There is nothing in this world that my son cannot do, okay? Take a good look at his reality, though. I am telling you all of this because I have been working in your restaurant as your head chef for over 20 years now. Do you really think that I'd be talking about your son like this now over something as petty as being jealous of him? For 20 years now? Well, good work making it 20 years here. Thank you very much. But why are you saying that now? Today you're being fired. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I am not going to let a man that thinks it's okay to talk bad about my son stay with us any longer. So you're fired. Understood? I'm sorry, Cassidy, but even you can't fire me just like that without talking with your husband about it first. Oh, I can. When my husband isn't around to handle business, I'm the one in charge as the owner of the restaurant. My son will be taking your place as the head chef now, so you and your unsophisticated palate can get lost. <laughs> unsophisticated palate? Are you seriously saying that about me? If you think you can get away with all of this because your husband owns this restaurant, you're going to regret what all comes next. If you really want to stay in the restaurant that badly, I'll let you. But the new head chef will be my son. He'll be your new boss, then. He has only just started working as a line chef, so he doesn't have the knowledge to lead a kitchen yet. How do you think this will go over with all the other employees within the restaurant? Can't you see that they're all going to become very upset with your decision? My decision is the owner's decision. I'm not going to be paying you any more now. If you don't mind that, then you can continue to work alongside him and help him move into your position. If you're not going to pay me, then I'm not going to stick around any longer. I have a family of my own that I need to feed. Then you're fired. <laughs> we don't need a palateless chef like you in our restaurant anymore. I'm never going to forgive you for making fun of my son's cooking. 
I was not making fun of him in any way. I was just trying to help improve his cooking using my best judgment. How many times am I going to have to tell you that before you understand me? If you're going to keep talking to your boss's wife like that, then you're definitely done here. I don't even want to see you around us ever again. We have no use for you anymore. The head chef is now my son, so you can pack your things up and get lost. We don't even have the money right now to be paying someone like you to make tasteless meals anyway. Thank you for the past 20 years. Get out of the restaurant right now. All right then. Once again, thank you. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't feel any sort of gratitude towards you after all these years. Must feel terrible having seen the consequences that come with picking on my son. I was never picking on him. But seeing that you want to keep treating me this way and fire me, I think this was a great end to my career here. I hope that everything goes well for you with your son as the head chef. I'm not sure what your husband will say about this, but I'll do as you asked and leave the restaurant for good. Now, I'll be going. Why are you not answering your phone? I'm sorry, but I had some things to take care of. What things? Work. Work? Did something happen with you? I see that you tried calling me plenty of times now. Well, the restaurant is in a bit of a tough spot. I'm confused as to why you never answered your phone the first time I called you. When you see me calling you that many times, wouldn't it be correct of you to give me a call back right away? I told you that I was working. What do you mean by the restaurant being in a bit of a tight spot? Are you getting a lot of complaints from all of your customers there? What the heck? Did you hear about that from someone else? If you already knew about things being bad here, then why didn't you come and save us? Save you? Why would I ever do that now? Huh? It's pretty obvious that people would have complaints about the food there after you promoted your novice son to be the head chef. <laughs> Yet you didn't listen to me about what I had to say and fired me anyway. And now that all of those complaints have piled up, you think I'd come back and help you? I think you're being a bit too selfish right now is what the problem is. My son, a novice? There's no way in hell, he's my dang son! You're the one that lacks the palate to see what a master he is! Did you not get the message from all of those complaints that came in? No matter how hard you try and avoid the facts by saying I'm the one with a bad taste, your son is the one that lacks the skills to cook even half decent food, and will never cook something decent unless he gets his act together. I'm sure that he's not the best cook, but there's no way that he's that bad as a chef. He's the son of a restaurant owner, after all. And so what that he's the son? Are you telling me that just because his dad has a restaurant, he's naturally been gifted the ability to cook well? I guess there was no point in all of us other chefs ever trying when someone can be born that way just because their parents have a restaurant. I'm sorry, Cassidy, but you're going to have to tell me a better excuse than that. <laughs> you stop that right now. I have thought all of this through very much. Then I guess you're just blessed because he's your son. Well, unfortunately, that bias that you have for him may just have ruined a restaurant. Do you know what your husband's going to think when he comes back? and sees the mess you made without ever consulting with him first. For the past 20 years, I have put my blood and sweat into that restaurant, making sure it does as well as it has been. Compared to your son, who doesn't give a crap about being a chef, I'm like the god of cooking. Doesn't give a crap? My son loves to cook, though. And I just thought that that would mean he could make things work. All he needs is a manual to tell him how to run the kitchen, right? As long as he gives that a couple reads, he should have no problem running the kitchen in this restaurant, right? 
What are you trying to do by putting an amateur like him into the position of head chef? His cooking isn't even that great. And before you even gave him enough time to learn from a master, you fired the master and thought that by having the manual, he'd be fine as a head chef. So you're saying my son can't do all of this on his own then? He wasn't even serious about his job in the first place. So how was he ever going to do that job on his own? Well, I guess the only thing that you could do for him now is pray that he makes it work. But I'm pretty sure things are going to do anything but work now. You've made a poor choice. That's led to the downfall of that restaurant in one day. It's only a matter of time now before everyone knows how far the restaurant's quality has gone downhill. If you're willing to say that, then get over here and help us! Really? I am tired of bickering with you. I am seriously pissed at you right now, but I need you here. I know that you're going to say this was all my fault, but for the time being, I'll allow you to say that. Oh, is that so? <laughs> From what I've heard, even though my son is a genius when it comes to cooking, he still needs someone around to help him work out all of the kinks of being the head chef. So I'll let you come here and help him become perfect. Hurry up and get over here, make some food for the customers, and make them forget about all those complaints they've made. Why are you talking like everything's going to be okay for you? Huh? What do you mean? I'm not coming back there for you. Huh? Why not? What kind of nerves do you have telling me something like that? Did you forget? that just yesterday you fired me from that place and told me to never come around you again? Yet now you're telling me to come back? I want to ask what kind of nerves you have saying things like that. Why are you being such a thick-skulled idiot right now? Isn't it obvious that I'm taking back what I said about firing you? Well, I never asked to be hired back into that place. Shut up and get back here, Andre. I'm going to be kind again and let you work here once more. Personally, I'd never let a disgusting and brainless man work for me, but since you seem to be important to this restaurant, then I'll let you come back. But just know that to my son and I, we don't need you. So that means from now on, you be nice to my son and only say compliments about his food. If you can do all of that, then I'll forgive you. Nobody's asking for you to forgive me, though. <laughs> And you saying what you just said is not going to get me to come back there. Huh? What are you saying now, Andre? I'm telling you that you're allowed to come back and work for my husband's amazing restaurant. You should be happy to be allowed back here after all you've done. You just got fired by me yesterday for doing something that was not acceptable, right? So you should understand the wrongs you did and want to be back here, right? I'm sorry, but trying to ask me in such a selfish way is never going to work for you. Especially since I just started to work at your restaurant's rival. <laughs> huh? Our restaurant's rival? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you whatsoever. They've always been the ones that you guys fight with over the customers, right? But they happen to have an owner here that respects me so much. Back when you guys had first hired me, he told me that if I ever got tired of working for you, I was welcome here at the same pay you guys gave me. Of course, I stuck with you guys there because I never had a problem with your husband, or really any of you. But when your guys' restaurant got bigger and the owner became more busy, he let you start running things even though you have no idea what you're doing most of the time. And so after what you did to me last time, I was finally given the chance to come over here and work for this restaurant's fine owner. Wait a second. So you're saying that you're already working over there for them now? It hasn't even been a day yet since you left this place. Well, after the option the owner here gave me a long time ago, me landing this job in less than a day was possible for me. And I'll never be coming back to your restaurant ever again now. Well... It's not even your restaurant in the first place, but... 
That's the restaurant that your husband worked so hard to maintain. But after taking some time off and leaving an amateur woman in charge, his whole life's work has gone down in flames due to her feelings for her useless son. And I can't wait to see what happens next with that restaurant now. Don't say things like that about us. My husband will be coming back to work tomorrow. I don't want to know what he'll think if he comes back to the restaurant being like this. I'm sure that things will be pretty intense between you two when that time comes. Because of his wife and useless son, he might have just lost his restaurant for good. And working there for 20 years, I had heard from all over just how amazing the place was. And I'm sure that now, everyone will be willing to try other restaurants with the reputation that restaurant will get. <laughs> other restaurants? Why the hell are you saying that? I think that your guys' restaurant isn't going to be around much longer. If you keep your son as the head chef there, I seriously think that all the customers that have entrusted their time and money to you will leave for good. So I think it's time you get rid of your son and find someone with a bit more skill. But before you can do that, you should work on finding a good excuse to tell your husband as to why all of this is happening. <laughs> Please, Andre, come back here. I can't allow my family's restaurant to go under. I'll apologize for how rude I was to you before, okay? And if you want to be the head chef here again, you are more than welcome to. No, thank you. I need to start working hard at my new job. So you and your son work hard together to make something happen there, okay? <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing you can really do now for that place. But, I guess that's what they call suffering the consequences, right? <laughs> In the end, Cassidy's son began to panic due to all the complaints and stress and started to serve out raw and undercooked food which led to the restaurant being shut down. Her husband was so frustrated with her that he kicked her out of their house and told her on the way out that he never wanted to see her again before getting a divorce from her. She ended up destroying the restaurant that he had put so much effort into, so I don't blame the man for doing that. After that, a lot of the cooks and waitstaff were left without a job. But luckily, the place that took Andre on was kind enough to hire all of them as well and soon opened up a second restaurant with all the staff they had. As for Cassidy and her son now, they are left without a place to go, and considering that neither of them have any idea what to do, they could be considered lost children on the streets. But this is what they both asked for, so there's no complaining about it now. Eight, I'm gonna be late today. I don't need dinner. Oh, are you out drinking again? Yeah, what? Haven't you been drinking too much lately? You seem to have a hangover every day. You should let your body rest. I don't really have a choice. I get requests from my minions to go out and eat, like, every day. They all love me too much. But you always end up drinking, too. Your medical checkup results were not that great. You should really hold off on drinking for a while. And you're spending too much, too. I understand you care about your subordinates, but you need to think about your budget, too. That's on you. You need to save up. I already am. Julia's gonna need money when she gets into high school. She goes to public school. Why would she need money? For starters, her school has a uniform. We need to pay for her tutoring right now, too. You need to save. What? She's already gotten in. What does she need tutoring for? It's so she won't have trouble keeping up in her AP classes. Maybe you should stop spending so much on her. What are you saying? Money spent on Julia is not going to waste. It's for her future. You saying money I spend is a waste? I'm not saying it's a waste. It's just too much. It's not essential. I'm working my butt off every day to feed you guys. And you're telling me not to spend money I earned? I appreciate you working for us, but I also work around the house. Shouldn't we be more cooperative? I earn more than you. That's true, but... How about you do something about your own spending before lashing out at me? Huh? I'm not wasting money. You are. Using the furnace like crazy? The utility cost always goes through the roof in the winter. You realize that? Wait, how is that a waste? It's sub-zero outside, and I can't even use the furnace? Just put on a coat. That's not enough. 
How am I going to do chores in a freezing room? People back in the day didn't have the comfort of heating. You need to be thankful for living in a house without a draft coming in. Just deal with it. That's just outrageous. Julia needs to study every day, too. What if she catches a cold? Make Julia wear a coat, too. That's enough to keep a cold away. Are you serious? Fine. Let her use heating in her room. All else is prohibited. Julia spends time in the living room, too. Then make her stay in her room. Why do you think a housewife is in any position to talk back to me? It's all on you. Miles, what time are you coming home today? I'm not telling you. Huh? Why? I need to prepare dinner. Because you're trying to fool me. What? Fool you? About what? You're using the furnace while I'm gone and turning it off before I get home so I don't notice. No, I'm not. Don't lie. The room's been oddly warm when I come home. Are you really going to chastise me for that? I told you it's prohibited. What's so hard about wearing a damn coat? You really expect me to do that? It's snowing outside. And? I'm going to get sick at this rate. Then I'll need to go to the hospital and pay for medicine. Isn't that more costly than heating? That's why I'm telling you to put a coat on. That's not realistic. Can't you think more rationally? How about ski wear? That'll keep you warm. And it's easy to move in. Will you stop? There's no way I'm doing that. Julia and I are only using the bare minimum. You need to let it go. I already permitted Julia's room. That's not enough. We can't eat dinner in the freezing room. Don't put Julia through this. Why don't you eat in Julia's room? You use the furnace all you want after coming home. And the cost is still less than your drinking. I work. Period. A housewife is in no position to live in extravagance. I'm going to start using surveillance camera. What? I'll monitor you to make sure you aren't using the furnace. That'll shut you up. Where's that money going to come from? Why don't you just let me use the furnace instead? You're just being mean. Shut up. This is decided. I'll take away more privileges if you try to delude me again. Get down on your knees if you want to use the furnace so much. Apologize for complaining about my drinking. What is that going to do? Just to make me feel better. You're the one that tried to force me into saving money. If you don't want Julia to get caught up in this, you need to settle it. Julia, your mother's not answering my calls. Is she with you? What are you doing? Did you just get home, Dad? Were you drinking again? This is part of my job. Anyways, that's not important now. The lights are all out. Where are you guys? You're not home? Mom got carried to the hospital. What? Where's the hospital? I'm not telling you. You're not welcome, jackass. Julia! How dare you call your father a jackass? I don't remember raising you like that. Shut up, jackass. It's your fault mom collapsed. Huh? Why me? She needs to keep track of her own health. Mom's been ill for several days now. She even had a fever. And why is that my fault? Who's the jackass that prohibited her from using the furnace? That's what made her sick. We had to call an ambulance. Why did she not do anything? She's not a baby. What? You serious? The heck is wrong with you? Making her live in a freezing house? Of course she's gonna get sick. I told her to use the furnace in your room, so it's not on me. What kind of reasoning is that? Mom was worried about giving me the cold. That's why she stayed in the living room. It's all your fault. If I had known she was sick... Don't try to make excuses now. You even installed cameras. What's wrong with you? It was to teach her a lesson for talking back to me. I gave her the chance to apologize, but she didn't. I heard about what happened, and there's no doubt you're to blame. Making a save-up while you're out drinking every night? That's why she collapsed. I despise you! All right, I'll apologize to her. So where's the hospital? Must be the city hospital, right? I told you not to come. Mom doesn't want you to come either. She doesn't want to see your face or hear your voice. I'm only worried about her. Give me a break. Your condescending attitude is not going to make things any better. Mom needs to rest anyways. Even if mom lets you off the hook, I never will forgive you. You're despicable. I never want to live with you again. That's a whole lot of trash talk. I told you not to talk to your father like that. If that's how you're going to be, fine. I'm not letting you in the house until I get an apology. Hey, Kate, when are you coming home? The house is messy and the laundry's piling up. Take care of it yourself. What? Don't expect me to get all soft on you just because you're sick. Get your butt back home if you're feeling better. You're not in the hospital anymore, right? I will never return to that house. So take care of yourself. What are you saying? Where are you going to live? I'm already with my parents. Julia and I will live here from now on. You better be kidding. I never agreed to living separately. 
You trying to weasel out of doing chores? I'll divorce you. Is that what you want? Yes, let's divorce. Oh, what? You want a divorce? I'm tired of dealing with you. Julia is okay with it too. I'm glad we've come to an agreement so smoothly. Let's get it moving. Uh, you can't afford to divorce me. Why would that be? It'll just be fine. Don't act so tough. How are you going to pay for your living? You were just saying Julia will need money for high school. You two can't live on your own. I'll have to depend on my parents for a while. But I'll start working, so shouldn't be a problem. Don't be ridiculous. Julia needs a father. She doesn't need a father like you. You splurge like it's nothing with your measly earnings. And don't even let us use the furnace. And Julia's high school is closer from my parents' house. I don't see any reason not to divorce. You... How's a housewife like you gonna find a decent job? You're gonna come crying to me in no time. You have nothing to worry about. My father's friend owns a company and he is looking for an accountant. He offered me the job. I used to work in accounting, so... That's ages ago! Yes, that was before Julia was born. But I've been helping out occasionally since then. You knew that, right? They already know I can do the job. They're just feeling sorry for you. They wouldn't hire me if I wasn't useful. I won't allow it. Just come home. Now. I'll let you use the furnace all you want. <laughs> Way too late for that. I don't care about you anymore. You think that'll lure me to you? Is the furnace the only thing you have to offer? We have a furnace over here too. <laughs> How am I gonna live? I don't care. Do what you need to do. I took care of you all these years. You can't just divorce me. You were the one that was wanting to divorce just a while ago? Isn't this what you wanted? Or were you just threatening me? I wouldn't call it that. I didn't think you'd want to divorce me. After all these years of taking care of you, how could you bite the hand that feeds you? That mindset is exactly why I want to divorce you. You've only caused me trouble anyways. With your frequent drinking, we barely had enough to live. I had to work to pay for Julia's field trip. You never listened. I've had enough with you. The furnace was just payback for your complaining. I wasn't being serious. You say that after installing a camera to monitor me? Nothing's gonna change my mind now. Take responsibility for your own actions. All, all right. Hey, I am sorry. You can use the furnace and I won't go drinking anymore. There. Happy now? No. I apologized. What's not enough? I can't stand that attitude. I don't want to be with you anymore, okay? An apology is not gonna make me forgive you. Same with Julia. We're better off without you. You'll be a lot more stable living with me. Mmm, living without heating in sub-zero temperatures. Not my idea of a stable life. I told you, you can use the damn furnace! Is that really all you have to say? I endured for so many years, and I've reached my limit. So it's over. I will divorce you no matter what. Hey, I really am sorry. Please come home. This house doesn't clean itself and the laundry is piling up. Then hire a maid. That's what you essentially need. We were a family for over 10 years. You have no feelings left at all? You've swept it all away and don't call us a family. Julia and I don't see you as part of our family. Get it through your thick skull that we're better off without you, okay? After that, I divorced my husband and my daughter and I are living happily with my parents. My ex must have been so shocked that he stopped going out for drinks and head straight home after work. Things would not have gotten this bad if he had stopped drinking a long time ago. Just goes to show how much he underestimated us. I just hope he continues to pay child support and not disappoint his daughter more than he already has. Julia has started going to high school and I have started my new job. Haven't already known them from before, my new workplace is suiting me very well. I will work hard to keep my daughter cheery. I will live in gratitude for a new life filled with more laughter than before.